Hello everyone, welcome back to my class. Today we will study plane wave propagation in an isotropic media. While introducing you double refractive uh, in index media or birefringent medium, uh, you, uh, I introduce uh, N O and N E, the refractive index for ordinary ray and refractive index for extraordinary ray. Now, the expression for N O is very simple, N O is equal to C Y V, but the expression for N E was quite complicated and it was direction dependent. Now, after this topic, we would be able to see how that uh, expression for uh, velocity of extraordinary ray or refractive index of extraordinary ray was der is derived or what we can say is that the medium properties are direction dependent in anisotropic medium while medium properties are direction independent in isotropic medium. Now, these things are mathematically understood through a relation between displacement vector d and electric field E. In isotropic medium, d is in the same direction as E and therefore, the equation number 32 holds for isotropic medium which is uh, equation and which uh, equation 32 says that d is equal to epsilon E, where epsilon is the thing, but the usual dielectric permittivity of the medium. On the other hand, in an isotropic medium, d is not in general in the direction of E. Okay? In that particular case, the epsilon, the dielectric permittivity, it becomes tensor and to represent tensor, we resort to matrix representation. Okay? Therefore, in an isotropic medium, this relation holds between D and E, where the matrix on the left hand side is component matrix of displacement vector D. This matrix is the component matrix of electric field E and this 3 by 3 matrix is the, it represents the tensorial nature of the, the dielectric permittivity. Okay. In usual in isotropic media, one can show that half diagonal terms are the same, but I mean to say is that this term is equal to this term, while this term is equal to this term, while and this term is equal to this term, which are given by equation number 34. With this, we can see that we are left with only 6 unknown term in this 3 by 3 matrix of uh, permittivity tensor. Okay. Now, if we rotate our coordinate system, then what will happen is that the values of this 3 by 3 matrix element changes. Now, if we align the coordinate system in such a way that only diagonal terms are non-zero, then such a coordinate system is called principal coordinate system and the axes are called principal axis. In principal coordinate system or principal axis system, we will be left with only diagonal term that are e epsilon xs, xx, epsilon yy and epsilon zz. Now, for brevity, instead of writing epsilon xx, we will from now onwards, we will just write epsilon x. Okay? Therefore, in this rotated coordinate system, we would have these relations dx is equal to epsilon x e x, dy is equal to epsilon y e y and dz is equal to epsilon z d z. Now, this coordinate system is known as, as I said before, principal axis system and the quantities epsilon x, epsilon y and epsilon z are known as principal dielectric permittivity of the medium. Now, there are two cases. The first case is of biaxial system, wherein epsilon x is not equal to epsilon y is again not equal to epsilon z. Okay? An isotropic material in which this relation holds is called biaxial material or biaxial crystal. Okay? And in these type of crystal, the principal refractive indices are given by equation number 37, which says that n x is equal to square root of epsilon x by epsilon naught, 
similarly n y is equal to square root of epsilon y by epsilon naught and n z is equal to square root of epsilon z by epsilon naught. And the second case is when epsilon x is equal to epsilon y, but not equal to epsilon z. Now, the crystals wherein this relation holds are called uniaxial crystal. Okay? Now, in such a medium, z axis represents the optic axis. Okay? The ordinary and extraordinary refractive indices in uniaxial crystals are defined as n naught is equal to square root of epsilon x by epsilon naught, which is again equal to square root of epsilon y by epsilon naught and n e which is extraordinary index which is equal to n z would be equal to square root of epsilon z by epsilon naught because n x is equal to n y, but this is not equal to n z yeah this is your n x this is your n y but we know that nx is equal to ny because epsilon x is equal to epsilon y. This is not equal to nz, therefore, there is a separate definition of F N nz or ne. But for isotropic medium, all epsilons are the same, epsilon x is equal to epsilon y is equal to epsilon z. Okay, therefore, there, there is no some specific directions like principal axis. Yeah? For isotropic medium, therefore, any three mutually perpendicular axis would work as a principal axis. Now, we will assume the isotropic medium to be non-magnetic. Okay, this would simplify our, our mathematics. Therefore, B would be equal to mu naught h, yeah, where mu naught is the free space magnetic permeability. You are hearing these two words permittivity and permeability. Yeah, I assume that everybody is aware of B, H, D and E. But permeability means the ease with which a material be magnetized in an external magnetic field. Similarly, permittivity is the ease with which a material be polarized in an extern externally applied electric field. Okay. These were the, uh, the introduction of the material, yeah? These are the properties of the material medium. Now, we will assume that a plane wave, plane electromagnetic wave is propagating in such a material medium. Okay. The electric field and the displacement vector for the electromagnetic wave can be expressed by equation number 42 and 43 respectively. Where 42 we have expression for electric field and in 43 we have expression for displacement vector d. You see here we have k dot r minus omega t in the exponent. Yeah. Now, to just to let you know that this term k dot r minus omega t represents a plane wave because at t is equal to 0, we are left with k dot r vector k dot vector r and this equation represents a uh, equation of a plane because say if this is the direction of k and if you draw a plane here then from this point say this is r1 and say this is r2 okay, these are the two vector then the projection of these two vectors on k they will decide k this expression k dot r. Okay? Now, if r 1 and r 2 are in the same plane, if they are in the this plane, then only k dot r would be constant, then only we will get same projection on the k vector direction. Yeah? If this is the projection, then they will fall on the same point if and only if r 1 and r 2 lies in a plane. Okay? This is why this equation 42 and 43. Uh, represents a plane electromagnetic wave. Okay, the face front is plane, the locus of points which are oscillating in the same phase, they create a plane and this is why this wave is called plane wave. Now, similarly, the expression for H and B field is given by equation number 44 and 45. Okay. We know that, uh, that the wave velocity and the wave refractive index are defined by this relation where v w is equal to omega by k r and which is again equal to c by n w. This relation we already know. We know that refractive index n is equal to c by v and this is exactly what is written here. Okay? Instead of writing v r n, we are writing n w and v w just w represents the wave and wave vector k is uh, omega by c into n and if you take the modulus, the vector sign will direction will go away and the modulus is equal to k which is omega by c into n w. We know all these things. 
Now we will determine the possible values of n w, what are the possible values of a wave refractive index which we get in a birefringent crystal. Now since the medium is dielectric from the Maxwell equation, first Maxwell equation we get divergence of d is equal to 0. Here we have assumed that the charge density is 0, okay, no charge density. Now in the component form equation 47 can be written as equation number 48. Okay. Now you see that you are getting here k y, yeah? we, are, we are getting k y because we have used equation this equation for d equation number 43. Okay. If you take the divergence of 43, you will get equation number 48. From here you see that this equation is nothing but it is dot product between d and k okay? and this is equal to 0. Since dot product between D and K is equal to 0, it means that D is at right angle to K, they are perpendicular because the dot product between two quantity A and B is equal to AB cos theta and if theta is equal to 90 degree, then this dot product is 0 and therefore equation 49 says that D is perpendicular to K. Okay. Similarly, in a non-magnetic medium, we have divergence of h is equal to 0 and from here we can derive that h is perpendicular to k. Yeah. Now in the absence of current, the Maxwell's curl equation that is curl E and curl h, it can be written in this form equation number 50 and, and 51, where curl E is equal to minus del B by del T and the expression of B we already know it is given here 45. Okay, if you take uh, the uh, time derivative of that B, you will get I omega B and B is equal to mu naught H. Therefore, you get this final expression for curly. Similarly, for curl H which is equal to uh, del D by del T plus J, but J is equal to 0, we already we have already assumed that there is no current density, j is equal to 0. Therefore, it is equal to minus i omega d. Now, we know that E is expressed as E is equal to E naught e to the power i k dot r minus omega t. Now, let us take the x component of equation number 50 in light of equation number 52. Now, the x component of curl E would be given by del E z by del y minus del E y by del E z. Okay? And if you take the derivative uh, of del E z with respect to y and E y with respect to z del z, then you get uh, these expressions. Yeah, after a little bit of simplification, the x component of curl E looks like this, i k cross E x component. Therefore, full vectorial equations looks like this. If you uh, just combine all x, y and z component, then curly is equal to i k cross e, which is equal to i omega mu naught into h. Now, from here, you, you can write the expression of h, which is nothing but 1 by omega uh, mu naught k cross e. Similarly, for curl h, the fourth equation, fourth Maxwell equation, we can write this expression. Okay? And from here we get the expression for D, yeah, D is here on the right hand side and uh, the expression for D from there uh, is written as 1 by omega H cross K. It means D is perpendicular to H as well as D is perpendicular to K. Okay, this is what equation 58 says. Similarly, this equation says that H is perpendicular to K as well as H is perpendicular to E. Now, it means H is at right angle to K, E and D yeah, with these equations with, equa with equation number 56 and equation number 58, we conclude that H is at right angle to K, E and D and it means K, E and D will always be in the same plane, yeah, which is very much obvious. H is not perpendicular to three quantities. Therefore, K, E and D will always be in the same plane. Okay? 
Now, we will substitute equation number 56 into 58 here this is our equation number 56 which has the expression of h we will substitute it into 58 ok. We will replace this h with the right hand side of equation number 56 this ok with this substitution and we will use this identity which says that a cross b cross c is equal to a dot c into b minus b dot c into a. With this we get this expression for displacement vector d. Now, let us simplify it we take uh, k uh, uh, the magnitude of k outside of this bracket then equation number 60 becomes equation number 61 or further simplification leads to equation number 62. You are seeing k cap, k cap is vector k by modulus k which is unit vector which points along vector k ok and we know that d is d x is equal to epsilon x e x which is in principal coordinate system and epsilon x is nothing but epsilon naught n x square which we already which we have already seen yeah therefore the x component of equation number 62 can be written as this the equation number 62 yeah yeah the x component of equation number 62 is written like this here ok where in what we did is that we picked the x component of d then x component of e and x component of k k cap which is outside the bracket. Now we already know that c square is 1 upon epsilon at mu naught a bit of simplification gives equation number 65 ok this looks a bit complicated and here uh, we have used that k x square plus k y square plus, plus k z square is equal to 1 this is uh, a property which you can use easily here. Now do notice that this k which is different from wave vector k are unit vector these are the component of the unit vector k cup in this let us call it kappa x kappa x kappa y they are and kappa z they are component of the unit vector k cap yeah. Now, similarly we can write the y component as well as z component ok. This is our e x component, this is y component and this is z component of the same equation ok. Now, these equations equation number 65, 66 and 67 they are the component of the same equation and they are are three homogeneous equation you see on the right hand side here we have 0 ok. Therefore, for non trivial solutions the determinant of the coefficient matrix must be 0 ok. Therefore, we equate this ma coefficient matrix to 0 ok. Now, for a given direction of propagation that is for a given value of kappa x kappa y and kappa z the solution of this equation number 68 this determinant gives us two allowed values of n w ok. But if you look into equation number 68 then you say that n w square is coming here, here, here it means that we will have an equation which will have n w to the power 6 as dominant order and then the other order will appear in this equation ok. Now uh, therefore, from equation 66 it appears as if we will have a cubic equation in n w square it means the dominant order would be n w square to the power 3 that is n w to the power 6 which would give us 3 roots of n w square, but the coefficient of n w to the power 6 will always be 0 and hence there will be always 2 roots ok. There would be only 2 roots of n w square. Now, I stop today's lecture here we will continue with this uh, derivation in the next lecture and then we will see what would be the final expression of an E and N O in, uh, in a uniaxial crystal. Thank you for joining, see you in the next class.